All right, on the heels of another review, here is uh, the Best Tux Swordfish. Um, yeah, I got this guy from the uh, the Blade HQ uh, annual sale. So, yep, I got their uh, their Blade HQ uh, 2021 coin, which is uh, the Dessert Warrior, which is uh, super nice. <laughs> and uh, let's see, yeah, that also qualified me for uh, a Knife Life sticker. Because uh, to be able to get the coin, it was 50 bucks. And uh, hey, almost all of uh, Best Tech's um, standard uh, series knives are 52. So it hit all of those points. All right. So, yeah, let's start off first. Uh, this guy is not small. We got, yeah, it's probably close to 3.9 inches. I think that's right around where they, they claim it as. 3.8 to 3.9. So, yeah, very, very um, kind of a, <laughs> a long knife. Uh, probably a bit longer than a lot of people are able to uh, carry in uh, a lot of areas like New York and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it kind of is what it is. I do kind of like these uh, longer knives. And... Uh, at least with a couple of the places I've lived in, a lot of those uh, knife length laws had to do with carrying them concealed rather than uh, carrying them at all. And uh, according to a lot of laws, as long as a pocket clip is visible on you, like you're not covering it up with a giant coat or something like that, then uh, they're not considered concealed. So there's, there's that. Uh, yeah, this guy has uh, quite a nice fit and finish. We, we got some nice uh, polished liners kind of thing going on here. Uh, decent polish on the uh, the blade. We have a, a decent enough uh, sharpening choil going on there. Not super deep, but uh, it's, it's certainly there. And we do have a, a very, very deep pocket uh, clip going on there that uh, yeah it does a pretty darn good job of staying out of the way you can still feel it when you're doing a uh, a uh, sort of a saber grip sort of thing like that but kind of disappears if you are kind of really gorilling your way through it with a uh, with a hammer grip or something like that uh, this guy does have a g10 backspace so that's black kind of matches uh, the uh, the front bolster g10 but we don't really have any jimpings. Um, but it is relatively comfortable to do in a uh, in a reverse grip. But uh, yeah, you're not going to have that stability of uh, jimping going on there. Uh, if I hadn't mentioned it before, this is in D2. And uh, yeah, this guy did take a considerable amount of effort to uh, get the edge set on there. It came with a decent enough edge. I think I measured it somewhere around like um, 260 or 270 on my uh, little uh, best knife edge tester. Which is uh, fairly decent for something coming out of a box. But uh, I know I can do a little bit better. So I generally put my own edges on them afterwards. Gives me something to do as well. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this guy's got T6 hardware going on on the front, except for the, uh, the pivot there. And it does have, um, bearings uh, that it rides on inside here. So, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and open them up. I will say, um, the first time that I did open this thing actually gave me a bit of trouble, um, to the point where, uh, <laughs> speaking of hammer grip, I actually did have to use a hammer. And uh, my little watch bar tool, wherever the heck I actually... Ah, here we are. Yeah, uh, the pivot as well as um, some of the uh, the backspacers in there were just holding on for dear life. And uh, it really did require a knock to be able to uh, get that loose. Which, hey, if you're dealing with a uh, super, super expensive knife, that's probably not something that you want to do. But, uh, hey, these things aren't very expensive. It's not the cheapest in the world. Like I said, it was 52 bucks. But, you know, not, not the end of the world either. It is kind of interesting a little bit how they've um, 
incorporated these scales here too. We'll take a look at that uh, once I finally get this little sucker cracked open. And yeah, you can see this guy had some uh, permanent Loctite on there as well. Uh, yeah, here's the uh, the G10 scale, and as you can see, this guy is uh, a bit different uh, as far as its bonding. Like uh, we've seen from uh, Tucson, where they'll use a dovetail joint or something like that if they're joining these two in here. This uh, uses kind of a strange um, button joining kind of thing going on here, and hey, it works. It's uh, it's nice and stable and all that sort of stuff. So. You know, good for them, but that seems like it might be a little bit more, a little bit more work than it might be worth for it. Hey, cool. Yeah, we have a little bit easier time trying to uh, get into the knife here. Let's see if I remember right. I do also have to. Uh, Loosen these guys up from the back end if I want to fully take this apart. And try to uh, kind of lace these things through a little bit or whatnot. Probably not. This guy is not the easiest knife to actually uh, disassemble. Well, yeah, I do have the, uh, the pivot out of the way here, as you can see. But yeah, these guys in the back really do cling quite a bit and uh, because of the way that they're designed you can't really push them through because they uh, sit in the middle there so I do have to do just a little bit of uh, prying action if I can't uh, get these guys loose otherwise hey, there we go all right cool much easier than the first time Yeah, we have a little bit of skeletonization going on on the uh, on both of the liners here. The liners are very thick. Keep that in mind because this isn't exactly a very very light knife. And this guy has got itty bitty little uh, ceramic bearings going on in there, which is uh, interesting for such a large knife. And I've seen this on a couple of knives before. Uh, Max Kotchuk, uh seems to do that on some of his knives, and uh, it was also the uh, the Free Tiger one that had uh, some bearings around that size. But this one just doesn't seem to uh, get that nice um, free floating feeling. Uh, I can't get this knife to drop shut. Um, it's not even quite a wiggle shut. It's a uh, a wrist snap kind of thing to uh, get it fully fully closed. And it's a little, uh, little set, but, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't affect the, uh, the ability of the tool to do its job. It just kind of affects, uh, the fidget factor for us stupid idiots who like to do that all the time. <laughs> so yeah, this guy does have a, uh, a blade stop pen, uh, very, very generous, uh, width on there for that. And uh, you kind of need that for a, you know, almost four inch blade because that does have a lot of force that it'll come snapping open with you at um and yeah this uh doesn't really kind of ride on the outside it has these uh holes here or, or whatnot um and uh these uh, bearings are uh, nested into the liners so uh yeah the uh the blade doesn't really have any uh, indentations kind of thing going on there so it does mitigate um a little bit of uh, dirt and grime and whatnot and uh, this blade pivot uh, is D-shaped, which is nice. And um, it seems like every manufacturer wants to have their D-shape facing somewhere differently. And uh, for these guys, as you can see, it's kind of uh, angled down this way, which is uh, certainly a bit different. But hey, that's how they designed it. So. Well, 
Yeah, what I will say is generally, um, if you don't need to uh, take this one apart, you might want to go ahead and skip that. Uh, like I said, I did have to actually uh, take this little uh, watch bar tool and um, stick them down into the pivot and uh, give a couple of taps on the top there to be able to uh, actually release the stress so I could uh, remove the rest of this stuff here. And, uh, yeah, if you're not, uh, super into that whole sort of thing or taking a hammer to a knife, <laughs> which, you know, is generally never a great idea, then there you go. But that was kind of my, uh, last, last ditch effort. Uh, I did end up trying to use, uh, both plastic and steel spudgers to, uh, do my best and kind of pry these up and these guys were not going anywhere until that uh pivot was loose speaking of which now it's um not actually wanting to go back in place because uh that d-shape was not exactly where it should have been placed and i'm doing my best to uh try to get that back in place because these have already kind of uh snapped back in there oh well wiggle that guy about and whatnot. Always a little easy to uh, actually align the pivot before you put anything else in place on a knife. Uh, yeah, there we go. But it is kind of interesting um, because of the way that they did that join. They have these two screws here <clears throat> excuse me, that, uh, you know, just kind of reinforced that join a little bit, which uh, to me seems like it was probably a little unnecessary in general with, uh, you know, just another complication of the way that they've uh, joined these two G10 pieces together. Yeah, I mean, in the uh, the manufacturing industry, um, any time that you're actually using a screw, that's uh, that's money right there. So uh, the less screws you actually need to uh, put something together, then uh, the better that uh, you know the return on the uh, the whole manufacturing thing is going to be. And it doesn't necessarily make doesn't necessarily make a uh, inferior product, but yeah, looking at something like a like a Hogue Deca, that thing is like studded in screws. It's got like um, I think seven or eight that uh, are attaching the uh, the liners to the uh, to the uh, the handle scales there, and then of course the pivot and the pocket clip and everything. It just really really seems overkill. Now this screw is probably going to give me a little bit of problems. Uh, no. Nah. I'll just brute force them a little bit. And I will unbrute force that because I do believe that, uh, yeah. This is a shorter screw. Come on, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> It's amazing how well things actually go together when you uh, use the uh, correct pieces. I do have some mats that I can have different uh, different pieces uh, in uh, different compartments so you can kind of keep track of exactly where everything goes. Uh, some people use that if they're uh, disassembling like a video card, if they're um, repasting or... Uh, yeah, you know, just cleaning it out or whatnot. And uh, I guess for some of those, it does make a little bit more sense. Kind of feels like uh, this bit might be uh, round enough, just a little tiny bit. It still feels nice and crisp. 
Ah, well. All right, time to adjust that uh, pivot tension. Whoa. All right, super nice and... Uh, Yeah, there we go. We got them all back together and everything. No problems there. But yeah, uh, pretty much no matter what I've been able to do, it's you know a violent wiggle or a uh, or a uh, a wrist flick to be able to get the uh, the blade to close. It is not going to be a drop shutty kind of thing. And I do think a lot of that's probably just the uh, the itty bitty kind of uh, bearings that they have in there for this particular blade. I do like the blade shape quite a bit. You know, it does have uh it's not really a distal tape or anything like that, but uh, it does kind of come down to, uh, you know, not exactly the uh, super, super thick there. Uh, it's not the absolute thinnest behind the edge. Probably part of the reason why it did take me uh, quite a bit to uh, get my edge on here. And, uh, yeah, it does have a, uh, a little tiny bit of a sharpening choil kind of going on here. But you can see, um, you can quite easily, uh, exhaust that, uh, in a very short amount of time. Um, you know, you can, uh, probably take, uh, a, a circular file, like a chainsaw file or something like that, and kind of add one, uh, or make it deeper or whatnot, uh, later on if you do actually, uh, use this as a daily driver and sharpen it enough to do that. As, you know, I've... Well, I've shown it a few times at this point, I believe. But, uh, yeah. You know, I've used my uh, Benchmade 940 for uh, many, many, many years. I think I've had it for, uh, what, 2002? So uh, coming up on um, 20 years. And uh, yeah, this guy has been sharpened a lot. And it's much smaller because of that. This guy's never had a, um, a sharpening choil or, or anything in there, which is why you certainly see that smile going on here on the end. That's something that a uh, sharpening choil is certainly there for. But uh, yeah, so you can see that um, with standard use, and uh, sharpening everything that uh, this guy, you know, you could stand to extend that further in if uh, if you are sharpening it up like that. Uh, the other thing about the uh, the pivot is it's kind of that uh, kind of, you know, angle or whatever. Uh, they do it so that this is supposed to be kind of vertical. This is supposed to look a little bit like a B and a little bit like an 8. And uh, you can see it's um, it's not exactly vertical. It's kind of off-center. And I don't necessarily think that was the intent. <laughs> but that is certainly what has happened here. But uh, yeah, that's about all I really have to say. Uh, I do really think that they did a decent heat treat on this guy. Because it did take a lot of effort to uh, be able to uh, get this guy to a nice sharp kind of thing. We got a little bit of uh, contouring. A little bit more here on the back for the uh, what I would probably call the beak since it stick, sticks out a little bit. Makes that just a little bit more comfortable for your uh, fourth finger, which um, it's absolutely going to fit whether you have, you know, normal size hands or, uh, you know, baseball mitts or uh, whatever else. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, that's going to work out alright. Uh, yeah, I still, uh, this pocket clip isn't bad, but, um, yeah, that certainly could be better. Uh, you know, Benchmade and Spyderco have certainly done a lot uh, to kind of have their uh, pocket clips. You can see this one's kind of bent all sorts of uh, out of out of whack or whatever. But it's very comfortable, stays out of the way, doesn't have any uh, crazy pointy edges or anything like that. And uh, spider coes end up um, kind of swooping in a little bit. Yeah, they're a little hourglass shape where it uh, 
kind of curves back in there so that point doesn't actually uh, interface with your hand, which I think is actually uh, very important. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a this is an interesting piece. I, I do like it. Uh, I have handled a few best techs in the past. I just kind of decided that uh, I should actually purchase one for myself rather than just kind of visiting them at shows and whatnot. And uh, glad to have it. It's uh, not my absolute favorite fidget-friendly, uh, crazy action kind of knife, but uh, it's a very, very down-to-earth, but large, um, you know, nice worker. So, I guess uh, kind of to get this guy uh, towards the end of the review process, uh, I'll go ahead and do some measurements on him. Uh, the measurements for all of my knives are going to be down in the description as well. Um, that way, you know, it's just a little bit easier sometimes to just see something rather than trying to uh, scan through, you know, this what looks to be 21 minute video at the moment <laughs> into uh, something that, uh, you know, you want that information right now. Well, it's available to you. And pow, yeah, 4.72 ounces or uh, 130, around 134 grams. So yeah, it's it's not the uh, the crazy over five ounce uh, knives that I've kind of taken a look at um, a little bit lately, but still, it, it's it's not a uh, it's not a dainty little thing. That is for sure. But, yeah, let's see, as far as uh, the thickness goes on this guy, it's not too bad. It's like 0 0.56 uh, of an inch. So, yeah, just a little bit thicker than you would get on a uh, Spyderco PM2, like this guy, which ends up being uh, 0 0.50. And the blade stock thickness on this guy is a nice slicey, basically like 3.4 millimeter. So that that's a pretty good trade off. Um, you get a a decent amount of uh, toughness due to the thick thickness that they have kind of going on there. Uh, it also kind of makes it look a little bit thinner because of the uh, the swedes that they kind of have carved in the back there. So on your you are looking at the back, it doesn't look quite as thick because the thickest part is behind there. But uh, yeah, it's it's not like a super. Super wide, like four millimeter wedge or anything like that. So this guy does a pretty darn good job at slicing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, everything I guess to say about that. So yeah, this is the uh, the Best Tech Swordfish. Uh, it does seem like Best Tech makes a lot of large knives. Uh, whether it's uh, this guy or uh, the penguin or any other kind of animal that they want to name their knives after, um, then yeah, a lot of them are at least three and a half, if not uh, larger, which I don't have problems with. But uh, like I said, I do know there's a lot of people in areas that, um, you know, these are probably a little out of reach for an everyday carry just because it's, uh, you know, kind of against your local laws and regulations. So, all right. Well, with that in mind, I appreciate y'all for watching. And uh, I hope you have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe.